We are rolling, gentlemen. All right. All right, well, welcome to Dallas. We're so excited about the Fluffy movie. This is, this is great to see these, these posters come out. Like, you've been doing this forever, but to, but to see this, this has got to be kind of a trip. This is very, very cool. And uh, I know it says right there, July 11th. This is the old poster. It's actually July 25th. I just want to throw that up there first. Because uh, we, we had a uh, little campaign that we were going to call it the 7-Eleven. Yeah. So we're trying to get 7-Eleven involved. But, uh, yeah, they changed it. There's no 725s. <laughs> so we can't, we can't go to 725s. Anyway, so, yeah, that's what's going on. But, yeah, this is very cool right here. Uh, a little CGI on the, on the actual the shirt right there. This shirt was actually red originally, and then they put this special tint to make it orange. Nice. So uh, it's pretty cool. I like it. I don't own an orange, orange shirt, but I do here. <laughs> yeah, but that's... That's really cool. Now I, I gotta say on the on the trailer, it's got an interesting tagline: twenty three countries, four hundred cities, half a million tickets, two hundred fifty thousand YouTube hits, one Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> Had to put a little humor in that, right? Yeah, there, right. <laughs> I actually own over seven hundred. Oh, wow. yeah. I know I'm not wearing one right now. I'm representing Auto Box, yeah. But uh, no, over seven hundred shirts from extra large all the way to six X. As wow. uh, you can see, I fluctuated and I grew with my career. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to ask you about that because you, you have slimmed down quite a bit, but you... you down 100 pounds, but I'm still a big dude. I know everybody's watching, well, uh, well, how big was he? Yeah, uh, 100 pounds, and I'm still a big dude, so that tells you. Yeah. Uh, I still got another 100 to go, so we'll see what uh, happens. But you had to, right? I, I had to. I'm type 2 diabetic, and uh, it's more of a health issue than, you know, trying to look better. I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm secure. <laughs> I got guys and girls hitting on me. It's all good. <laughs> but what happens when you lose another 100 pounds, and then you're not... Fluffy. No, but I'm around to enjoy the rest of my career. So, yeah. uh, you know, I'm around to enjoy my family, my friends, and that's mainly the reason why I started losing weight. I was very comfortable in my skin, but, you know, it's easy to say, uh, oh, I want to eat cake and tacos and stuff when you're 25 and nothing's messing with you. But now I'm 30, uh, whoo, I'm going to be 38 in a couple of weeks. Yeah. And uh, yeah, time catches up to you. And so my circulation started getting really bad, having problems with my fingertips, my toes were getting bad, the circulation in my legs, and so. Once my vision started popping off, then it's like, okay, I gotta do something, yeah. like now. And I looked into surgery and uh, yeah, that wasn't gonna work either because of my scheduling. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and speaking of which, that's a rough schedule you have. I mean, you're always- 46 the weeks out of the year, man. And so I go home every week, but I'm gone every weekend. Mm. Yeah. I, I, do you ever- Like a hooker with a van, I don't stop. <laughs> I really don't. Do you ever get used to that? I've been doing it for so long, I don't know anything else. Yeah. You know, so I mean, I, I tell my family, look, I'm, I'm not gonna be there for holidays, I'm not gonna be there for anniversaries, I'm not gonna be there for birthdays. Get used to it now, so let's enjoy this Monday when I'm home. <laughs> that they've learned, my family knows. Monday is like, that's dad day, right? I'm home, <laughs> we're gonna go to the movies, we're gonna go have dinner, we're gonna go do stuff, and the best part is there's no lines. That's yeah. the way I sell it to my son. I go, look, there's no wait. And I'm, I'm every now and then I'm home on a Saturday, and I go, you see that long line? See that long line? We're gonna wait in that. You know it's not there on Monday, that line. And so he actually likes Mondays. Nice. So are you gonna actually go check out your own phone? I know there's a whole trend. Oh, are you kidding me? I'm, I'm so freaking vain. Yeah, I'm gonna, go and I'm gonna go watch myself on the big screen. I'm just gonna sit there, tell my girl to shut up. Shut up, I'm watching me. Uh, and I'm gonna go take my son, because half of it's about him. So yeah. he's you know, definitely, uh, you know, was very influential in this one. Oh, that's so cool. Now, what, like, since they haven't screened it for us yet, what can you tell us about the film? I'll tell you right now, we're going to screen it here in Dallas on the 24th. I've okay. already got the official date, so I'll make sure you get to come and check it out. Uh, I'm just going to tell you that it's very personal. I mean, you think I'm opening up now. Wait till you see what happens in the movie. I mean, I was I took like seven shots before I did the movie. I was just like, <laughs> and then when I was eight, it really gets crazy. And uh, there's actually a mini film at the beginning that tells the story of how my parents met and how I was you know, conceived without the actual footage, but I mean, uh, what got me into comedy? And yeah. I think that's a story that I've, I've told in the past in interviews, yeah. but to actually put it into a movie and then bring out my concert, I think that was really cool the way we combined it. Yeah, which is really cool because, I mean, when's the first time you did realize that you were funny? When I got a check. Because <laughs> otherwise, man, I'm just, you know, he's the funniest guy to himself, but unless somebody's willing to pay you for it. Uh, that's when you know you're a pro. Yeah. Well, and you've been doing some varied stuff. I mean, we saw you in Magic Mike, and then you're mm -hmm. doing Disney stuff. They uh, they didn't let me do a whole lot of comedy in Magic Mike. I was I'm trying to play a serious part, a real serious uh, drug dealer. And uh, to go from that character to uh, Disney's planes, where I was playing two evil, pro you know, propeller wheeling, uh, you know, biplanes or whatever you want to call them. Uh, a big difference. But I mean, like now I'm doing a lot, a lot of voiceover work, which is really cool. Uh, I got a couple of things coming out at the end of the year, so I'm, I'm staying pretty busy. Good. Well, and that must be fun for you to do the voices too. And it's quick. I love the fact that you can just go in, uh, you can knock out a couple of voices in a few hours, and that's a whole movie. Wow. Yeah. 
versus and everybody versus, else has to work on yeah, it for you. Versus two months of being there and just look an action. Hey, cut. All right, action. All right, cut. And then by the fifth time, you're just like, dude, I'm tired. That's yeah. what they bring the diva out of you. You know, oh, yeah. I walk in there with the best attitude I can, but somebody freaking yells at you enough times. So you're like, I will be in my trailer. <laughs> You know, they, they bring it right out of your ass, man. So okay, basically, uh, I love doing this. This was cool. This is yeah. all me. So I'm very proud of it, and I'm willing to work as hard as it takes to make it successful. Everything else, man, it's just like, ugh. Like, I will never quit doing stand-up. Yeah. I'll never quit doing stand-up. Uh, that's priority. Uh, I enjoy it. I like the traveling. I like the instant feedback. You don't get that from movies. Yeah. Well, and speaking of instant feedback, you did a meet and greet today at a 7-Eleven that had hundreds of Because that's how I do it, people. <laughs> meet and greets at 7-Eleven. Uh, this is something I've been doing for a long time. I call them fan appreciation days. Yeah. And so what I'll do is I'll set up something where, like, for example, I'll tweet. Uh, I want to take, you know, my fans in whatever city that I'm in to, for breakfast. You know, the first 300 people that show up, I'm going to buy you guys a pancake breakfast. You know, we'll hang out, we'll take pictures, and usually the city has a problem with it because, you know, police get involved because the lines do get crazy. You know, something about pancakes and me that makes people go crack, crack. <laughs> uh, today we did a Slurpee day at 7-Eleven, so anybody that showed up because it was hot gets a free Slurpee and taking pictures, and sure as, <laughs> sure as hell, we show up, and it was crazy. Wow. You know, there was a guy outside selling ice cream. He goes, you need to come more often and make a killing today. I'm like, all right, man, that's, that's what I'm here for, bro. Uh, I've done, uh, I've taken fans to movies, yeah. uh, let's see, uh, car washes, uh, I've done free shows, I'm saying, you know, like, hey, the first first thousand people that show up at this one venue uh, with a can of, uh, like, uh, canned food for the homeless, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to give you free tickets to the show tonight, and, you know, so we've done things like that, and uh, I just think that now that there's a movie, it's like, ooh, okay, all right, good, do some more. Are you, are you getting enough uh, time to yourself though? I mean, if you think about it, after probably the 300th photo op, don't like eventually you start going, oh, I just need to relax for that. And I think that's why we put a, a limit to it because yeah. I don't want to be there and have people not have a good experience. You know, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't want them to get to me when I'm all tired and drained. Like I was, I was a few minutes ago, and I'll be honest with you, I came in here and you, you saw me and you know, my face was in a bowl of Chipotle and I'm eating half asleep because they've been running me all day. It's, oh, yeah. it's just, uh, Anytime we do meet and greets, we always put a cap on it because I don't want the people to get me and then it just, you know, you're tired. Hey, how's it going? Oh, nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. So at least this way, if there's a cap, I'm still fresh and I can keep up the energy for the people because it shows on a picture. Yeah. Yeah, when they show the people, it's the hi, what's going on here? Is he sick? What's wrong? And that's just because I try to go too long. Yeah. So who would you wait a few hours in line to meet? I'd, w I'd wait to meet Obama. I'd wait to meet, uh, who did I tell you earlier? It was uh, Paul McCartney. Yep. Paul McCartney, one of the Beatles, and uh, let's see, who, who the heck else would I wait to? I'd wait to meet Bob Barker. I know that yeah. sounds crazy, but freaking Bob Barker, man. Yeah. He's a legend, and he's still around. Yeah. And uh, when I get to him, I'd be that fan. Hey, man, can you say a brand new car? He'd probably tell me to go to hell. I'd tickle him or something, offer him cash. I just want to hear him <laughs> say it again. Brand new car! I love it. Now, uh, your tour, and I know some of the tags were on there for Unity Through Laughter, if you can talk about that. Unity Through Laughter. Uh, basically, I, I wanted to make it so that this comedy concert film is not rated R. Uh, I made it so that everybody can come and watch it and enjoy it, because like at my live concert shows, there's always restrictions because of the building. The building either says, if it's a casino, it's 21 and over, or if it's a comedy club, it's 18 and over. And a lot of times, I got fans that are younger that told their parents about me, because I hear it all the time. Our kids turned us on to you. They wanted to be here, but they don't allow it, so they hate us right now. And I'm like, I'm sorry. So I figured I'd do something where you know everybody could come watch it. Yeah. And that's never been done before. All comedy concert films have always been rated R. So uh, I tell people the only F word in this movie is fluffy. <laughs> yeah. So unity through laughter just means I'm bringing everybody together. I'm not talking about politics. I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about sports. Nothing that's going to divide crowds. It's all nice, friendly stuff that everyone can relate to. And this one has a very, very nice message at the end of it. Good. Now speaking of sports, we got to ask you if you're a big sports fan. See how he is. See how he is. I yep. just told him. Yep. That. <laughs> um, you know what? Uh, I was very happy that the San Antonio Spurs won. I was very happy for them. I uh, wanted them to win. My favorite player is Tim Duncan. That guy's a class act. He's not like most of the NBA players. That, you know, in your face, yeah, yeah, dunked on you. Tim Duncan's like, well, you know, the team got together, and we just want to make sure that we won the game as a team, and it was great. And uh, out of my kids, that's how he is. He's yeah. chill. That's a good representation of the NBA. So Tim Duncan and uh, Spurs, Lakers. Uh, that, yeah, I cheer for the Lakers, um, even when they're not Lakering. Cause that's it right now. They're at home right now, trying to figure things out for next year. Never been a Clippers fan, uh, Dodger fan, yes. Raiders fans, yes. Even though sometimes Raider fans hurt people. Sorry. 
but aside from that, that's about it. I mean, yeah, you know, Mexico's in the World Cup right now, so yeah. it'd be cool if they won, and if not, then uh, the people are gonna need to come laugh at the Fluffy movie, uh, July 25th, so they can come in. Híjole, México perdió, vamos a ver Fluffy. Come see Fluffy, it'll be good. Good, well, last thing we want to ask you is, on the Drew Pearson Show, we always ask people their Hail Mary moments, and Drew famously called the Hail Mary Pass. I want to know your Hail Mary moment where you just had to go for it and it worked out for you. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, there's been a few Hail Marys. <laughs> I don't know about your viewing audience. I want to keep this family friendly, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> a couple of Hail Mary moments. Uh, gambling in Las Vegas. I put $5,000 on the table one night and uh, I just went for it because I had lost four. And I figured, let me throw down five, get it back, and then one. And it worked out. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. My girl was really pissed off, though. <laughs> And I'm like, but I want you, but you could have lost. I go, but I did it, did I? So drive the car, woman. <laughs> I would have given her the money so she wouldn't be upset with me when we got to the house. But yeah, that was a good, a good home area. And obviously the first time I got up on stage, I was terrified the first time I went up. And I just went for it. And uh, that was April 10th of 1997. And that was the biggest Hail Mary was the first time I got up. Because if I wouldn't have gotten up that one day, I probably would have never done it. Yeah. And we wouldn't have this conversation. You'd be interviewing George Lopez right now. <laughs> Well, yeah, you were working in, in telecom at one point, right? Uh, what the heck was it called? It was called LA Cellular in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and uh, that was uh, eventually bought out by AT and T. Yeah. So I was selling cell phones and stuff like that, and yeah, uh -huh. good times. I, I had money. Well, and, and here you are. So congratulations on everything. We're so proud of you. Thank so you. happy for you. Looking forward to seeing you on the Don't big screen. Get people July twenty fifth in theaters everywhere. The fluffy movie. It's gonna be cray cray. <laughs>